this concept you mentioned quite a few times, which is very, very hot, uh, called subnet. Would you mind explain in simple words just for the audience out there that might not be super familiar with Avalanche subnet, please? Yeah, sure. Avalanche in the first place was created because of this whole new uh, consensus protocol called Avalanche Consensus. And that was really the inception of Avalanche, right? The ability to solve that trilemma issue in distributed systems where you have to manage security, you have to manage uh, decentralization and scalability. Those are like the three things you could be concerned about. And Avalanche Consensus is really the first protocol to, to solve that. And beyond that, we have this really awesome feature called subnets. And subnets, they allow you to, uh, you can think of it like layer one as a service. You get to spin up your own network, which means that you get to use the Avalanche Consensus uh, protocol, which means you get a really fast engine, but you get to have your own environment to execute your application. So that means you get to have your own validator set, you get to have your own gas token, and you get to have your own set of rules that you want to incorporate because uh, you can also customize your virtual machine uh, in your own environment. So it's VM agnostic, which is great. So you can have uh, you know, a WASM-based VM or you can just use the EVM if you want to. But you can think of it as layer one as a service to building your own application in your own environment, which is the, the future of Web3 for sure on the infrastructure side. Follow-up question is that, would it be quite expensive to run your own subnets? Or the requirement for running a subnet is that you have to have the validators of uh, of the subnet also validate the primary network. And validators, the the minimum the minimum validating stake is two thousand a box right now. Okay. Uh, you know, with governance down the road, you, that that could be prioritized and changed and voted upon in terms of the minimum stake. But there's fifteen hundred existing validators out there. There's also a lot of uh, infrastructure services that are coming on board that are really excited about supporting uh, subnets. So you know, uh, you can almost abstract that, uh, I guess, I guess staking and just pay some sort of fee as you would with like, you know, when you spin up an AWS environment, right? So you just, so, right. so those types of costs, I, I don't have exact number because those right. things are being, uh, you know, ironed out and, and, and understood, but, but at least in terms of like the validator costs, like that's, that's the amount. Okay. Gotcha. So it sounds like if someone wants to get in on that, uh, to establish their own subnet and, um, now it's a pretty good time to get in on that, right? <laughs> Yeah, I am amazed with the development team. The amount of tooling that has been released with subnets is just just insane. Uh, yeah. And and I, like even even just like the CLI deployment where you get to spin up your own test subnet in under a minute is so cool. Like that oh, is, that's crazy. It's just it's just amazing. So you can start like testing out what it what it looks like to have a subnet really really okay. quickly. So okay. um, yeah yeah I think I think there's uh you know there's a lot of documentation on it, uh, a lot of tooling around it. Very very exciting stuff. Joe, not only you sound very knowledgeable it's not like you put in the time when it comes to your work and in the space so the question is that how many hours on average a day that you spend working or work related which is like reading on twitter or reading article uh would you mind share that with us roughly it's hard to put exact number on it but i would say constantly just plugged in whether people messaging me things and me reading things or going on twitter and new events going on or uh, talking with different projects and teams, uh, it's it's. I wouldn't say there's an exact uh, time because it's constantly plugged in, and that's just because I just love, I just love this space. Like it's just so much fun. So like on the weekends, uh, you know, reading reading new things. You know, I would say maybe at least uh, ten hours a day for sure. Uh, just yeah. plugged in, and uh, I try to take you know maybe Saturdays uh, off for the most part. Yeah, very very plugged in, and so uh, it's just too much fun. When I tell friends that uh, reading through Twitter is actually part of my job. They, they laugh. They think I'm kidding. Uh, I'm like, no, no. Like I actually, if I don't read through Twitter, crypto Twitter, I, 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 I fall behind easily. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 I can guarantee you that's hundred percent sure. Right. It's like the amount of the time they spend on Twitter. I feel like it's never enough. And sometimes I have to like force myself to be like, okay, cool. Stop scrolling. Stop going down the thread, you know, take a break, you know, go, go outside for a walk. Yeah, so, the, the, the best is when like a meme pops up and people are like, you're not working. You're just looking at a meme. Like, what is that? And it's like, no, no, no. That's just like part of crypto Twitter. Like that's, <laughs> but yeah, it's a, it's a very interesting industry for sure, man. Yeah, absolutely. Maybe I'll be like looking at the latest meme from Trader Joe's. So <laughs> With that said, we're getting one step closer to uh, the question, which it comes to work-life balance, right? So how many hours do you sleep a night on average? At least like around like seven for sure. Nice. Um, but again, like I think it's more just like being plugged in constantly, uh, yeah. whether whether it's the weekend or weekday, just because yeah. it's just like crypto's 24-7, right? Absolutely. Like, yeah. Absolutely. Do you have any other trick or advice for young individuals and just as driven as us 
they want to work just as hard as us. Um, since we need tips for them so that they don't feel the burnout. I feel like if you're in crypto, it's uh, you, you might have those moments where you feel burnt out. I don't really have actually any specific advice on that besides just like finding something that you love doing, right? Because then it doesn't <laughs> like I bet you will feel burnt out eventually at, at points and you just take those little breaks. But uh, I think, yeah, I mean, that's just the, I know, I know it sounds like uh, cliche, right? It's like, find what you love. It doesn't really feel like work as much for sure. For other people, when they first hear that, it might sound like cliche, but I just genuinely think that's the biggest truth. Steve Dowski constantly talks about, you know, like do, uh, like really find what you're passionate about. And I constantly ask myself and ask other people, what is something that you're willing to do for the rest of your life? Even there's no money involved. Right. right. And I think with that question in mind, it's very easy for people to find um, something they're really passionate about, they really love to do. Find what you love and just really do that. The funny part about that is I thought I loved, uh, and I, I, I guess I do, but like hospitality, right? Like I went to the hotel school at Cornell and that was like, that was like my biggest thing, right? Like I just wanted to go into the hotel industry, go into restaurants. Uh, oh. I actually wanted to, I wanted to open up my own restaurant and then, and then I came across crypto and I was like, okay. And then I <laughs> just took a complete 180. But uh, you know, I thought I, I thought I loved that, and uh, but I guess you know it, it's interesting. You might think that you like something, and then you discover something else, uh, and it just like piques your interest even more. But um, yeah, but I do think that, that that's the biggest thing. It's just like something that like keeps on challenging you and makes you want to learn. I think is the is the core of it for sure. Yeah, yeah. Because when there's challenge there, we also have opportunity to grow, right? If it's only staying in the comfort zone and missing a lot of fun, exciting experience in life, right? And also. On your case, who knows, right? Maybe you might chance to grow your uh, network or experience in the Web3 space. And down the line, maybe five, 10 years, you have your own restaurant, you have your own hotel, and then you have this amazing series of NFTs, right? And then just uh, <laughs> maybe all come back in full circle. Who knows, right? Right, man. I'm going to create an NFT hotel. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, there there are really interesting things with NFTs and loyalty stuff, which is really cool. But uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe maybe they'll uh, they'll cross over. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations on anything that, that I should uh, dig into this summer? I'm curious. Um, actually, um, have you heard of uh, biology, Srivanasan? Sh- he was the CTO of Coinbase and, and now oh, I sorry, think- Sorry, but Balaji, yes, 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 of course. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. yeah, right. yeah. yeah. So, uh, so yeah, he was the CTO of Coinbase and now I think he just uh, chilling somewhere in Singapore and he'd been like writing and talking about this idea called the network state. And actually I was reading this chapter earlier today. This is how he called it, right? A network state is a highly aligned online community with the capacity for collective action that crowdfunds territory around the world and eventually gains diplomatic recognition from the pre-existing states, right? And uh, this is f- such a fascinating idea. He had a ton of podcasts talk about this, which by the way, like, one of the reasons I started the podcast is because I want to get uh, more and more experience and get better and better at uh, interviewing, ask questions, and eventually want to have him on this podcast as well, right? So anyway, back to the point, right? So usually when we're talking about a state system, we think about lands, right? But when it comes to network state, it start with the mines and then come to the land, which is like, it's could be similar uh, to a DAO with decentralized autonomous organization as we are quite familiar with, but this network state actually we had an online community and then we actually will be crowdfunding and purchase land and then little by little become more and more legit, if you will, and then gain diplomatic recognition from the pre-existing states. I found that is absolutely such a fascinating idea. He, so he just released three days ago this whole book uh, about it. Uh, oh, so that's what I'm currently reading. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll definitely check it out. And also, I guess now we have to get Balaji on next, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes. So if you, if you, if you know him... Um, uh, make sure, or if you or anyone who's watching this right now know biology, please tell him that, you know, I'll, I'll love to have him on the podcast. So yeah, well, yeah you got to put in a plug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm reading on right now. But uh, I'm also I'm reading another book um, by James Allen. Have you heard of him? James Allen, so he wrote this, um, a whole series of books, essentially, like literally 100 years ago. Well, probably more. Some called him, he's like leading force of the new thought movement, essentially. He had this like book, this notorious famous code, As a Man Thinketh, which is like literally as the Bible phrase said, uh, whatever he focused his mind and he thought on, then that is what he or she will become. And he has mm-hmm. this whole book and whole series of books talking about that. So I did a podcast with my friend the other day. We talked about James Allen and he recommended me this new, another book by James Allen. So I'm currently reading about that. I also like drop in the show notes and I'll send you a link as well, just in case you're interested. Um, yeah, please. And I love that. You know, just, uh, you, you, well, you said that you, you are basically, you are, you become what you are, uh, by, by just like 
thinking what 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 was the exact quote that you said it was like very short and such a beautiful phrase is like as a man think in his heart or mind so is he period that's it i love that, that that's awesome yeah. yeah 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 and then i have all this revelation from that one sentence right that i'd be more conscious with my thoughts and more conscious with how i talk to myself how i talk to other people with that said so do you have a spiritual practice? Do you like meditate, yoga, or? I used to, and yeah, then crypto took over. And <laughs> but <laughs> I did try med meditation at one point, which is pretty pretty great. At least just like going outside for a walk around the park or something. I think is the most important yeah. part. I used to work out a lot, and then and then I a funny story. I actually broke my leg, and then and then since then I <laughs> I'm fine now. But at the no then, way. Then, yeah, this happened. Like yeah, if I showed you the video, I like flew off the bowl and. Yeah, it was a ridiculous thing, man. <laughs> yeah, so I was okay. I was on a bowl, and uh, okay. this was at like a wedding, a cousin's wedding, and uh, there was uh, you know of course alcohol involved, and yeah, yeah, you know, yeah naturally yeah. going onto a bowl, you know, flying off, and uh, no way. And, uh, I tore my no PCL. Too? Do you have a dream destination that you're planning on going? I'm excited for Korea. I've never been there, but I've heard amazing things. So I'm going for Korea Blockchain Week. That'll oh, be a yeah. really exciting time. Korea is a very interesting market. There's uh, so much energy there with crypto. And so I'm, I'm just excited to meet a lot of different people there. So that, that's about a month, I think, right now. So yeah, August, yeah early August. Okay, okay. Career blockchain week in August. Awesome. That's very exciting. I assume across all social media that you're most active. You're like extremely active on Twitter, right? More lately, especially yeah. gaming yeah. front, I've been I've been making more tweets about that. I think it's definitely more important, you know, to to have more people, uh, especially from our team. Out, out there talking about yeah. avalanche and educating and bring new thoughts into the gaming side of whether mm. on the economics or uh, you know just what I'm seeing in terms of different games that I, I like to see. Tell us your Twitter handle, and obviously I'll drop in the show notes link as well. Yeah, for sure. I, it's just uh, it's just the username's J zero E F E R R A R A. So my name, but with the zero uh, at, in okay. terms though. Yeah, yeah. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll definitely send it. Uh, Jay loved it, and I hope uh, you you love answering this question as well. What advice would you give it to your 18 or 22 year old self? Yeah, that's, that's a, that's a really good question. D during that time I was, I was actually, that was when I was just kind of getting into crypto and, um, what I wish I did more at that time was understanding the tech a little bit early on and, uh, and, and pushing myself to ask more questions on the, on the tech front. And instead of just like reading random, random things, ignoring all the noise, right? I think, I think there were a lot of people who were questioning, you know, me going into crypto and, uh, and, and going into blockchain and sticking to what you believe in and, and, you know, what you want to actually pursue, I think is the biggest thing. And at that time, yeah, there were a lot of people questioning about why I would pursue this industry and this path forward instead of going through hospitality and stuff like that. Really, really sticking to, wow, what, what you believe in is like the biggest thing. And that's what I would tell myself for sure. What do you mean by the noise? And do you have any like tips on like how to ignore the noise essentially that's a good question so i what i mean by that is really just like people like either say like not making fun but like you know like why are you going into crypto or why are you wasting your time like what is this bitcoin whatever and uh and i think i think regardless of like what industry you're in there, there's gonna be people who maybe say like make fun of you for going into something that you believe in yeah. and you just have to like stick with it whether you're doing a startup whether you're researching something or or going to a specific vertical as long as you enjoy and love because what do they know? Like they don't, they don't know what you think when you wake up in the morning, right? They don't know yeah. what, what you're thinking when you go to bed and, and what your aspirations are really. And so I think, I think like that's the biggest thing is just like ignoring all the noise, focusing on what you're doing and what you love, uh, as long as it means that you're, you're learning and you're pushing yourself. I think, um, that's, that, that was like the biggest thing is like just ignoring the noise. Right. Yeah. I think that's absolutely wonderful and beautiful. I got to have you back here very soon. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Joe from Avalabs. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. Such a pleasure.